Now that you've discussed the focal brain areas in detail, you understand the lobes as well as the circulation, we can now have an easy discussion about the vascularity of the brain and how that will impact uh, a person if you had a blockage in that region. So we'll use this information to discuss vascular uh, syndromes. So looking deeper at the brain, at the underbelly again, we see our circo willis. And essentially, uh, in this overview, I'm going to use a PowerPoint, which I'm also posting on Blackboard for you. And if you take a look now, you can see certain areas are highlighted. So not only is this a good way for you to review the information, but it's a good way for you to test yourself. So for example, we see the circo willis embedded in the brain. And if we were to come up and click on the anterior cerebral artery, it's going to take us to a slide that reminds us of what regions of the brain are impacted by the anterior cerebral artery. So frontal lobe, parietal lobe, corpus callosum, and cingulate gyrus. Now, this PowerPoint here also goes a bit deeper and discusses the primary symptoms a person would have if they were to have a ischemic stroke of the anterior cerebral artery. So the frontal lobe would be damaged. Again, the medial portion of the frontal lobe in the end will be damaged if you lose blood supply through the anterior cerebral artery. As a result, you're going to lose uh, the ability to utilize your primary motor cortex. Okay, And this is going to primarily affect the lower extremity. The medial portion of the frontal lobe, as well as the parietal lobe, impact the lower extremity more than the upper extremity. So as a result of an ischemic stroke of the anterior cerebral artery, you'll have frontal lobe damage, causing damage to the primary motor cortex in the lower extremity more than the upper extremities. This will cause contralateral hemiparesis. That same damage in the parietal lobe is going to damage the medial portion of the parietal lobe, which is going to damage the primary somatosensory cortex, impacting the lower extremities. So that's why you'll have contralateral hemisensory loss. <clears throat> Corpus callosum, bimanual task impairment. So essentially any information that's going to have to cross from right to left, uh, it has to communicate across corpus callosum. The anterior cerebral artery supplies the blood that keeps the corpus callosum and the frontal lobe uh, viable, as well as the parietal lobe. As a result, you would lose bimanual tasks. And then the cingulate gyrus, it's uh, major control center for emotional control impairments, and that's supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. So when you're using this for study purposes, take a look at this PowerPoint and look in the bottom right of each of these slides and you see a home button. Hit home, takes you back to our main screen of the brain with the circle of Willis embedded. So let's go on and discuss the second one, which is actually the most common artery that's uh, impaired in an ischemic stroke. This is the middle cerebral artery. <coughs> the middle cerebral artery is actually the most commonly impaired in ischemic stroke, but also has the greatest deficits as a result. So middle cerebral artery impacts the frontal lobe and parietal lobe, just like the anterior cerebral artery, except now it impacts the lateral aspect, not the medial. As a result, it's going to impact upper extremities greater than lower extremities. So a nice... Uh, key point to memorize is that anterior cerebral artery will impact lower extremities more than upper. Middle cerebral artery will impact upper extremities more than lower. So all the same lobes are imp impacted here, or I should say in the frontal and parietal lobes are, are the same here. Uh, we have primary motor cortex, Broca's area, premotor cortex, and frontal eye fields being impacted from the loss of blood supply to the lateral aspect of the frontal lobe. And then you have primary somatosensory cortex for the upper extremity, as well as your optic radiations, which are impacted by the lateral aspect of your parietal lobe. So this is extremely important, again, to differentiate between anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery. Symptoms are going to be very different for a person that has a stroke in these regions, and as a result, your treatment approach will have to be different. In addition, you have your temporal lobe, which houses your auditory cortex, Wernicke's area, internal capsule, and optic radiations as well. So here from the middle cerebral artery, you're going to also have some hearing loss, receptive speech impairment. You'll lose some of your axonal connections, which is also going to result in motor control and somatosensory deficits. 
and that's on top of what's already damaged in the parietal lobe and the frontal lobe. And then you have optic radiations there, which is going to theoretically cause you to lose a visual field and portion, lose sight in portion of your visual field. Okay. Now, the basal ganglia is going to be impacted by the middle cerebral artery, and this is where somebody who has had a stroke can now present with a movement disorder, and that's because they have lack of blood supply to the basal ganglia, and as a result, will not be able to produce enough dopamine or acetylcholine or may overproduce one or the other. So let's go back to our uh, diagram here. Let's go to our third most important cerebral artery, and that's going to be our posterior cerebral artery. So the posterior cerebral artery uh, impacts the occipital cortex, temporal cortex, the thalamus, and subthalamic nuclei. Now, the impacts that this will have specifically to a person if they had a stroke of the posterior cerebral artery, they're going to have contralateral homonymous hemianopsia. So that's visual field loss on the opposite side. So both eyes will lose their visual field on one side of the body. And you can review this in great detail in the eye book. You're also going to have a memory impairment because the temporal cortex is impacted. You'll have sensory disturbance because of the thalamus and may develop something called th thalamic pain syndrome, which is essentially a centralized pain syndrome that is not easily treatable by medication, rather requires neuroplastic training. And you can discuss this further next semester. And then there's the subthalamic nuclei, which again is involved, just like the basal ganglia, in movement disorders. So a person with a posterior cerebral artery deficit could also result in uh, a movement disorder as well, uh, including tremor or involuntary movements. Okay, so before we get down to our uh, cerebellum, let's stop, stop off at our basilar artery. The basilar artery really uh, supplies the brainstem region of the brain, or the base of the brain, if you will, which is going to give you the pons. So if a person were to have a basal artery infarct, they're going to have tetraplegia, uh, thanks to damage to the corticospinal tract, cranial nerve dysfunction, all the way from 4 up to 8, and potentially coma because of the reticular formation. Okay, we'll skip over the uh, cerebellar arteries and go over to the vertebral artery, which is going to work its way down from the pons, and that's going to impact the medulla, resulting in hemiplegia, contralateral hemiplegia, and cranial nerve dysfunction 9 through 12. So vertebral artery stroke is going to result in significant impairments of functional activities and movement. However, because it's lower and it's below the cerebral cortex, you're not going to have significant uh, memory loss or uh, <clears throat> cerebral dysfunction. So now we move back down to uh, the cerebellum. Now anything that's going to damage the cerebellum is going to result in <clears throat> loss of coordination. And in, in summary, we can call that ataxia. So the quick and easy way to look at the cerebellum is if you have uh, superior or inferior artery damage, you're going to ultimately have cerebellar ataxia. Again, we'll get deeper into this with discussions on the cerebellum. But most important, we need to understand that we're going to have cerebellar ataxia and potentially vestibular dysfunction coming from the uh, vestibulocerebellar region. Inferior cerebellar artery, very similar story, cerebellar ataxia. But now we have additional cranial nerve infarcts, which is going to cause loss of sensation in the face and potentially dysphagia. So utilize this chart here to study, to bounce yourself back and forth to memorize and confirm your knowledge of what region of the brain will be impacted if you have a deficit in any of the arteries. Now this is discussing the vascular syndromes, however, uh, anything that causes a blockage in any of the vessels will result in the same loss of function, which will result in the same presentation as somebody that does have an ischemic infarct.